looking at one final example. Uh, f of x equals 1 plus cosine squared of 2x to the cube root. Well, right away we see that there's a squared cosine term. Well, let's just go ahead and try to find out what that is. So let's call that a equals cosine squared 2x. So a prime, well, <clears throat> let's just split this up into two terms, which is cosine of 2x times cosine of 2x. Well, applying the product rule, we get derivative of the first term, negative sine of 2x. Well, we know that if we uh, apply the chain rule to this, well, all we have to do is find the derivative of the giant expression times derivative of the u portion, which is 2 in our case. So it would be negative 2 sine of 2x times cosine of 2x plus, same thing, negative 2 sine of 2x times the first part. And if we simplify that out, we just negative 4 sine of 2x times cosine of 2x. So now we have a prime term. Uh, we don't need to worry about that later when we apply our over-encompassing chain rule for the entire expression. So let's go ahead and, and say that um, our u is equal to 1 plus cosine squared 2x. So that our u du dx equals, well, our du dx equals the derivative of cosine squared 2x plus 1, but the one term just simply becomes 0 when you take the derivative. So this just becomes negative 4 sine of 2x times cosine of 2x. And f of x becomes, well, f of u is u cubed, which equals 3u squared. So uh, f of x is 3 times u, which in our case is 1 plus cosine squared 2x squared. And we know that d, dy dx, or f prime of x, equals our dy du term, which is 3 times 1 plus cosine squared 2x squared times our du dx term, negative 4 times sine of 2x cosine of 2x. So we can simplify this down a little bit, um, which might be really difficult because there's a square term, squared, times a sine and a cosine. So uh, we'll just leave it be, but we have to recognize that this is our actual question, f prime of pi. So we'll just go ahead and plug in pi. And we'll get 3 times 1 plus, well, cosine of pi is 1, squared is 1, times negative 4, well, sine, sine of pi is 0, so this term doesn't even matter. So this whole thing becomes 0. And that's multiplying the other term, so everything becomes 0. So we've looked at a lot of chain rule applications, and some of them are quite complicated with uh, product rule, quotient rule, uh, power rule, and the chain rule, and sometimes two chain rules in uh, one problem. But as long as we keep our notations very, very clear, uh, we can keep this whole setup, no matter how many rules we use, uh, clear in our heads and solved easily. So thanks for watching educator.com. See you next time.